Good morning, church. Thank the Lord for this opportunity to share God's Word. We are now on our series on the chisel. And our subtitle is Becoming the Masterpiece God Created You to Be. God created us uh, and He is continuing making us His Masterpiece. Let me show you a picture. Is it beautiful? Huh? This is a wooden sculpture uh, by a Chinese who took him four years to finish this beautiful masterpiece. Now, when we see this picture, what is our immediate Reaction. First reaction. Ang ganda, di ba? So beautiful. Then, second thought is, ang galing naman nung sculpture na yon, yung uh, gumawa niyan. Ang galing. But, uh, when we see this picture related to our series, let us not think of the one who curved it. Because in our lesson, the one who is curbing is God. He can do anything. He can do many beautiful things. We should think of ourselves as the wood. Tayo yung kahoy. Tayo yung inuukit-ukit. Now, we are living sacrifice, di ba? Buhay tayo, di ba? So, if we are being curbed, masakit, di ba? So, are you willing to be curbed by our Creator, the Master Peacemaker. Ukit, ukit, ukit tayo. Ha? Lahat ng masasamang ugali, mga bad temper, attitude, maling-mali mga kaisipan, gusto mong tanggalin, ha? Lord, so that we can become a beautiful masterpiece. Tayo yung kahoy, ha? hindi tayo yung sculptor. Si Lord ang sculptor. Tayo yung kahoy. Masakit yun. So, the question is, are you willing? Now, our second lesson is, are you willing to risk? We have the first lesson. Uh, are you willing to be called? Now, are you willing to risk? Our story, our passage is from Matthew Chapter 14, verse 22 to, 23, to 33, we just read a while ago. This is a story surrounding uh, the Lord Jesus walking on water. Uh, this uh, incident uh, uh, took place <coughs> in one of the records. Now, before this incident, before this incident was the record of Jesus feeding the 5,000. All four Gospels recorded this incident, this miracle. God turned uh, two pieces of uh, fish, five loaves of bread, to feed more than 5,000. 5,000 is the number of men. Uh, men. Hindi binibilang ang mga babae nung araw. So, it could be more than 10,000 plus children. The Lord perform a miracle to feed this uh, 10,000 uh, 10, people. Now, after that incident, G John told us exactly what were the, me where, what were the people thinking. Huh? John said, Jesus, knowing they intended to come and make him king by force, huh? Uh, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Jesus knew that these people wanted him to be their king. Uh, they were under the Roman Empire, uh, uh, cruel uh, oppression by the Roman Empire. They want to be free. Uh, and if Jesus can perform miracle, wow, not only we will be free politically, uh, we don't have to work anymore. 
Araw-araw may pagkain tayo, hindi na tayo magtatrabaho. So they were forcing him. Ha? They were saying, let's go, let's go and attack the Roman palace and get this Roman uh, government out. Ha? They were forcing him and Jesus withdrew and he told the people to go away, including the disciples. Ha? He told the disciples to take the boat and go across the, the lake. <clears throat> now, do you think the disciples have the same thinking of these people? They were also wanting Jesus to be the king at that time? Huh? Do you think they are also thinking that way? They were thinking also. They wanted Jesus to be the king. Huh? Do you remember John and James? They were uh, they told their mother to uh, inunahan yung iba na, can you Lord make my one of my sons sit on your right and one on your left? Huh? Gusto nila maging kanan kamay, kaliwat kamay ni Jesus, di ba? And the ten disciples, when they knew that naunahan sila, galit. They were they quarreled because of that. They wanted Jesus to be the king. So when Jesus told them to go away and take the boat, get across the water, masama ang loob nila. They, they, they didn't like that. They didn't like that. They want to go with the crowd who wanted him to be the king. Now, Jesus, uh, immediately, Jesus made disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. I want you to take note of the word ahead. Ahead. Other version is uh, uh, go ahead. Nga. Go ahead. Uh, mauna ka na. When people tell you to go ahead, it means he will come afterwards, di ba? Susunod siya, di ba? Pinauna lang eh. Susunod si Jesus. So, take note of that because when somebody, especially uh, a powerful man like Jesus, telling you to go ahead, for sure he is coming, for sure whatever happened, before you reach the destination, you will be safe. But what happened? What happened? Uh, after they obeyed, there were there was a storm uh, and the boat was already considered distant from the land buffeted by waves because the wind was against it a wind against it and and um, they cannot proceed and the wind is so so strong that they were in danger but remember Jesus told them to go ahead. So, even though there will be storms, Jesus will come afterwards and save you. Now, let us apply to ourselves. What are the things that you need to obey God at this time? God is telling you something. Are you obeying Him? We can hear God's word. We can read God's word. Uh, we can see signs. Uh, these are God's way of telling us what to do. Uh, sometimes it's through circumstances. Sometimes it's through encouragement of, of uh, other church members, especially those who are more matured like you, like uh, your pastors, your cell leaders, uh, telling you to do something. Are you obeying? Are you obeying? The first, uh, uh, the first way to, to be chiseled, to be made into God's masterpiece is for you to obey. If you don't obey, God cannot do anything. Huh? God is waiting for you to obey. So the disciples obeyed and there was danger. God did not promise. God did not promise that, that uh, 
skies will always be blue. Huh? And uh, bed without uh, uh, thorns, roses without thorns. Huh? There, will, there are tribulations, Jesus told us. Now, we may face wind. If we obey, we may face wind. It's very natural. This world is full of tribulations. God is not taking away the tribulation, but he has overcome the world. Then, Jesus appeared. Jesus came walking on the water. Now, these disciples have heard many stories of people drowning, killed, and stories were told that they saw ghosts. So immediately when they saw something like that, immediately they think of those stories they heard and think that this is a ghost. So when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. So obedience will take us facing wind and facing fear. Huh? These are, these are very natural if you obey. Obedience may face wind. Obedience may face fear. Fear coming from stories from other people. Now, <clears throat> but what did Jesus say? Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. The word, it is I, was used by John in his gospel seven times. I am the bread of life. I am the great shepherd. I am the life and resurrection. Seven times. This is the same word. It is I. I am who I am. And Jesus said, it is I. So take courage. Don't be afraid. And Jesus identifies himself and tells the disciples not to fear. Jesus identifies himself. Now, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Of course, you said, I know Jesus. He is the Son of God. He came to die for my sins. He rose again from the dead. He is coming again. Yes, I know him. But do you know him in a personal intimate manner? Are you close with him? Kilala mo lang siya or malapit ka sa kanya? It's different of knowing and close relationship with God. So if you want Jesus to identify himself to you, your, fear will be, your fears will be gone. This world is full of fearful things. But if you know Jesus intimately, uh, your, fear, your fear will be gone. Jesus identified himself and he said, do not fear. Do not fear. Now, after this, Peter said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on waters. Okay. Now, we often criticize Peter for talking without thinking. Huh? Yes, madalas si Peter may ganun tendency. Huh? Hindi nag-iisip. Kung gusto niyang sabihin, sinasabi niya kagad. Huh? There was one time that Jesus told the disciples that I am about to be suffer, I am going to be uh, arrested. I will suffer under the, the Jewish leaders. Huh? Peter took Jesus aside. Lord, hindi mangyayari yan. Huh? Absolutely, uh, it will not happen. What did Jesus tell Peter? Remember? Get behind me, Satan. Tinawag siya na Satan. Your thought not, this does not come from God. It came from you. It's your personal desire. Uh, 
You only thought of yourself. Get behind me, Satan. Because that spirit that talked to Peter was the spirit of Satan. Kaya Jesus rebuked the power, the spirit behind Peter. Get behind me, Satan. Sabihan, sabihan ka ba naman na ano? Nasabihan ka naman na sataras ka? <laughs> Sakit, di ba? Because Peter sometimes have the tendency to say something without any, without thinking. There was also another time when Jesus was about to be arrested. He told the disciples, this is the night that I will be a bit, uh, arrested. What did Peter say? No, Lord, if you go up to prison, I will go with you. Even uh, if I have to die, I'll die for you. Huh? What did Jesus tell Peter? Before the, crow, the cock crows, bago magtitila ako yung uh, manok, uh, you will deny me three times. And true enough, Peter denied Jesus three times. Because he was talking without thinking. Huh? That is what we have this impression about Peter, diba? But Peter sometimes, huh, sometimes say something good also. Huh? Uh, remember when uh, Jesus asked the disciples what? Are the people talking about me? What do they think about me? Peter said, You are Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay? Pinuri siya ni Jesus. Jesus praised him. He said, That revelation comes from God. God revealed that to you. So he said something uh, good. Sometimes he said something wrong. Now, when he said, Lord, if it is you, uh, tell me to come to you on water. Was that correct? Was that mayabang? Or uh, talking without thinking? Uh, or was it correct? Uh, who said that it's wrong? Wala? Who said that it's correct? Oh, mayroon. Correct. Pero how about the others? No opinion? Huh? Huh? It was a correct statement. Why? Because Jesus said, come. Jesus said, come. He was, he was asking for an extraordinary thing. Uh, man walking, human being walking on the water is an ordinary thing. Uh, yes, it is, it is a risk to take. But uh, Jesus said, come. Jesus did not say, ang yabang mo naman. Tao ka lang eh. Aapak ka sa tubig. Hindi mo ba alam kung gaano kalalim yan? Did Jesus did not say, did not say uh, anything wrong about that. Jesus said, come. Do the extraordinary thing. Do the impossible. You are a human being. Huh? You can walk on water because of me. Come. Now, uh, recently I have lots of time. I am writing a book, Memoirs, Memoirs of My Life, from the day I was born until today, 72 years old. Uh, I wrote uh, more than 50 pages, single page, single space. Uh, it's now being edited, uh, and I, I hope to publish it very soon. Uh, my title, my title of my book is "Am I Cold?" Uh, tinawag ba ako? I'm tinawag ba ako? Am I cold? Uh, I told the story about how I came to the Lord when I was about 28 years old. Uh, 
Uh, I got baptized on April. I, I attended the whole Philippines uh, summer conference in Baguio in May. And there I dedicated myself to become a pastor, full-time pastor. I was already married. I have a one-year, uh, half-year-old child. And uh, I walked to the front and uh, affirmed that I will leave my co- occupation. I will go and study seminary. So April, baptized, May, summer conference, June. I was uh, applying at Biblical Seminary of the Philippines. Now, after they checked my salvation, if I was truly born again or what, the first question they asked me, are you sure you are being called? No, I'm a new believer. I don't know about this calling. I said, no, I don't know. I don't know if I'm called or not. And then why are you here? What are you, why are you... St- why are you studying? Why do you want to study? He said, I want to share the gospel. I don't know how. I want to be trained. Ang kapal-kapal ng Bible. I don't know how to start and to read. I want to be taught. Huh? Go under classes. After discussion, those who interviewed me said, okay, we'll accept you under probation uh, with one condition that you have to pray for one year and be sure that you are being called by God. Okay, so I started classes. Of course, I prayed. Sinabi sa akin, masunod rin ako eh. I prayed, God, pinatawag mo ba ako? Please show me signs. Show me word. Uh, after one year, no calling. No calling. So why did they allow me to continue to study. And for four years, there was no calling. Why did they allow me to graduate and become a pastor? You wait for my book. I will give you a copy. But you can look back my life since I was born. You can look back, trace back, you can judge by yourself uh, if I am called or not. If I am not called, you can tell me to step down right now. So, what I mean is, Peter volunteered himself. He said, Lord, I want to go to you. Just like Isaiah. Huh? I say, uh, uh, by the way, during the conference I attended, there was a pr- pastor who prayed, Lord, here am I, send me. I did not know that that came from Isaiah 6 8. I did not know I was a new believer. But I prayed, agreeing with him, Lord, here am I, send me. Uh, did God say, yabang mo naman eh. No. As long as you are willing, as you are, or as you are, as long as you wanted to be trained, you will obey, you will uh, focus your life on Him. I don't think God will reject you if you are sincere. So, that was what happened. Isaiah said, Lord, here am I, send me. Peter said, come. Uh, Peter said, Lord, Let me go to you. Let me walk on waters. Jesus said, come. Come. So this statement by Peter is not a wrong statement. Sometimes he is wrong. Sometimes this time he is right. Because Jesus said, come. Of course, when you come, you will face risk. You will face risk. Because sometimes you will... Look at the circumstances, the wind, uh, and then you began to fear, and then he began to sink slowly. Uh, he walked several steps, and he began to sink because his focus uh, was no longer in Jesus. He looked at his side, and he saw this 
wave so strong, he began to sing. Because obedient may face danger if your focus is not on Jesus. You look at your circumstances, you look at this world, uh, you will easily uh, be distracted and you will lose faith. And what happened after this? Peter cried out. What did Jesus what did Peter cried out? Andrew, ihagis mo na yung lubid. John, uh, James, ihagis mo yung salbabida. No. Jesus cried out, Lord, save me. Lord, serve me. The first thing when you face danger is not to call on people. You call the Lord. Of course, the Lord will use people to help you, but they all came from the Lord. So you have to call the Lord. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And what did Jesus did? Immediately, Jesus saved Peter. So when in danger, we call on God. Jesus rescued Peter and encouraged him to move from fear to faith. Jesus first rescued Peter. Later on, he encouraged him. It's not the, way, it's not the other way around. And there was no, no blaming or sisihan. Kasi ikaw, yabang-yabang mo kasi. Alam mo, tao ka lang. Gusto pang lumakad sa tubig. Hindi ganun. Jesus saved him first and then encouraged him to have faith. You see the, the, the sequence? God saved us first and then he will slowly train us to develop our faith. Huh? It's not the other way around. So after this one, they came back to the boat and those who were in the boat worship him, worship Jesus, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. So it tells us that Peter's obedience, Peter's faith encouraged others. We need faith, we need obedience, uh, we need courage, we need faith for ourselves, but at the same time, you should know if we have faith, we have obedience. We can encourage others. People will see you with obedience, faith. They too will strengthen their faith because of you. So it's not for ourselves only. It's also for others. Just like here, the disciples, those who were in the boat, worship Jesus as truly the Son of God. You want others to know God? You obey first. You have faith first. And then you will attract them and they will praise God. So this is the story of our passage. I have several questions for you to meditate. Uh, Your group leaders, small leaders, will choose from these questions. Uh, Number seven, obedience can help others to know Christ. Peter's risk caused the other disciples to worship Jesus. Number one, what is God calling you to do that you need to obey? What is God calling you to do? Uh, it's between you and God. Are you willing to take risk to obey God? Obeying God takes risk. What danger are you afraid of? Uh, any any af- danger you are afraid of any if you obey do you so sol- how do you solve your problem human effort or you call on god how did god help you in your troubles number 6 did your obedience make others increase their faith in god may we ask Mr. Sherman, we have the closing song, 
And after that, I'll have a closing prayer. Let's sing first the song, Wherever He Leads, oh, Where Thou He Leads, I Will Go. I will obey, Lord. I'm willing to take risk. Even though there is danger, there is fear, but we know you will save us immediately, even before you develop our faith. So help us to be obedient. Help us to to overcome fear, take the risk of going wherever you want us to go to serve you. May, may we be like Peter asking to take the extraordinary things, to do the impossible, Just like Isaiah said, Lord, here am I. Send me. And sure, you, Lord Jesus, you will say, Come. Come. I'll chisel you. I'll make you to be my masterpiece. If you are willing to be chiseled, pieces by pieces, taken out of our lives to become the beautiful masterpiece you want us to be, Lord. Help us, Lord, to make this lesson be part of our lives. And then, Lord, our faith, our obedience will encourage others, encourage not only brothers and sisters in Christ, in the church, even our uh, uh, associates, those who we get in contact with every day, they will know Christ because of us, because of our obedience, of, of, because of our faith. People will come to know you because we are the shining light. We glorify you, magnify your name. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.